The prestigious media outlet, The Financial Times, has written an article assessing the Balkan region's potential for engaging a membership into the European Union, declaring the EU agenda ambitious. Minister for Infrastructure and Energy, Damian Jignouri, inspected the port of Douras today, outlining a plan to expand it and turn Douras into a popular cruise ship destination. Mayor Arian Vadliai has called on citizens to take advantage of the postponed deadline for setting up water contracts and installing the appropriate equipment, promising 24-hour water supply in five years. Good evening. It's six o'clock on Thursday, the 1st of February 2018. Welcome to the English edition of Aura News. My name is Alexandra and I'm here to bring you the day's top stories from across the country, translated into English. A report has been written by the prestigious Financial Times declaring the integration of Balkan countries into the EU an ambitious agenda aimed at protecting against Russia. Diplomats say the EU's ambitious agenda for the Balkans, which is seen more as a motivational uh, agenda than realistic one, is of a particular importance in strengthening the link between Brussels and the region, especially given Russia's promises of an alternative partnership instead of aligning with the EU. However, the Financial Times recognises that the prospects of membership have long been a catalyst for reforms and reconciliation in the Balkans, ever since the wars of the 1990s. In addition to the document that the Commission will submit, it is expected that each of the six Western Balkan countries will be required to resolve bilateral disputes and strengthen their stance against corruption, in order to ensure the EU avoids repeating the mistakes made with the acceptance of Romania and Bulgaria. The Financial Times predicts that Serbia and Montenegro, which have already started membership negotiations, will be able to join the EU by 2025. Meanwhile, Albania and Macedonia remain pending following recommendations from the Commission to launch negotiations. Although many EU member states are for the expansion, the states of the Western Balkans feel they face strong opposition from powerful countries. On this note, the Financial Times mentions Kosovo's case and Spain's historic refusal to recognise it as an independent state. <clears throat> Talks between Albania and Greece regarding the maritime border have resumed for the first time since 2013. Speaking during an interview with Aura News, the Director of Treaties and International Law Department within the Foreign Ministry, Arman Skapi, emphasises that during the negotiations, Albania has asked its neighbour to withdraw from the 2013 agreement. Asked about the statement by Greek Foreign Minister Nikos Kotsias regarding the 12-mile stretch of the Greek maritime border, Skapi emphasised that during the talks, the first success was the fall of the agreement of nine years ago. In the talks, Greece withdrew from the 2009 agreement, announced Arman Skapi. Up to several years ago, the Greek side stood firm in its stance to adhere to what was signed in 2009, while the Albanian side has continued to hold its position that the 2009 draft agreement is not valid as it was rejected by the Constitutional Court. Therefore, both sides have been forced to enter into negotiations over a new deal. The Albanian side must be guided by the points mentioned in the Constitutional Court decision regarding the problems evidenced from the 2009 proposal. Both sides should take into account respective legislation, which determines the extent of their maritime border ownership. Scarpi adds that the parties have agreed in principle to reach a delimiting line of mar marine spaces, relying on the convention of the, the law of the sea. As for the negotiating group, Scarpi adds that the president will also be informed. The agreement is in principle and the President is being informed about the technicalities, said Armand Scarpi. On the other hand, an international expert in relations emphasised that no hasty decisions should be taken on such an important issue. According to him, discussions on the deal with Italy took place over a period of seven to eight years, even though they were not as problematic. The Minister of Infrastructure and Energy, Damian Jignouri, paid a visit to the port of Douris, inspecting the passenger terminal closely and holding a discussion with the port directors regarding potential development. We are here because we will have two very interesting developments in the port of Douris. Firstly, this year we will begin the long-awaited project of deepening and expanding the port, which means there will be more space for more activities. In addition, discussions have begun about the possibility of turning the port of Douris into a Mediterranean cruise destination. This means that during the season, a cruise ship would arrive here every day, bringing a significant economic boost for the port and the entire city of Douris, said Jignori. 
Further, he clarified that the Port Authority has taken the appropriate steps to apply to donors and banks in finding funding, which will enable the further development of the port. The Port Authority has also applied for funding at the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, where the request was seen with high priority. I am convinced that by combining this funding with the increased interest of the cruisers, there will be a greater economic growth for the port and the whole city. The port generally experiences economic growth, but the level will be further increased, explained Jignori. Jignori emphasised that investments into the road network will also increase interest in the port of Douras to the benefit of not only Albania, but also other countries in the region. Today marks the official launch of the announced operation to protect drinking water and, as it was stated, businesses are the first to be inspected. Eight working groups are on the ground in Tirana, mainly in the Daiti and Astir areas, where 25 verifications were carried out today before noon. Four businessmen were found with illegal connections and now face criminal charges. But the action has also faced controversy on its first day. A 24-year-old in Elbasan was escorted to the police station following an incident in which he is accused of making physical contact with employees of the water supplier tasked with the responsibility of conducting the checks. In Škoda, four working groups are on the ground. The first day of the operation saw one businessman escorted to the police station to face charges of water theft. Water abuses by businesses were also identified by the Task Force of Water Supply in Doris, leading a businessman conducting economical activities in the Vora area sent for criminal proceedings. If there are still businesses or citizens who think that they will not be discovered, the engineers supervising the action emphasise that this will be impossible, thanks to the new technology being used. The national action against water abuse was initiated by the federal government, but its implementation on the ground is the task of the individual municipalities and water supply companies across the country. Families have yet another 27 days to volunteer to legalise their connections without facing penalties. A recent announcement has changed the way that Albanian schools will operate in regards to class schedules. As of today, timetables will be arranged so that students study three subjects a day, with each class lasting for 90 minutes. The teachers have expressed concern over the challenges this initiative presents for them, especially given the incredibly short notice for the change and the need to alter their schedule of work, plans and overall methodology of teaching. The teaching methodology changes as a result of this schedule amendment, said Albana Kulakshi, a teacher at the Congressi Lushna School. School directors across the country have held consultative meetings with parents who expressed optimism about the initiative. We have organised consultative meetings with parents, declared Albana Hoja, the director of the 22 Tetori School in Berat. Measures have been taken to prepare the teachers, advised Shkulchim Alkai, director of the Regional Education Directorate of FEAR. From Monday, the initiative will be implemented for all state schools, both the nine-year institutions and secondary schools. The initiative has not found support, however, from the opposition parties, who on Wednesday called on the Ministry of Education to withdraw the plan. Customers who are not yet equipped with a water contract should rush to take advantage of the remaining weeks of the legalisation grace period. Today, the operation against businesses without contracts with the water supplier uh, or are not equipped with water meters. However, however, family customers still have until February 28th to arrange that which is necessary without the need to face penalties. Who has decided to live in Tirana has admitted that here we respect rules and state contracts. In Tirana, we do not steal public property. Just like the 90% of Tirana's population that pay all their bills and liabilities, I believe that the remaining 10% would prefer to do the right thing voluntarily instead of being penalised, said Arion Veliai. Mayor Veliai, accompanied also by a US aid representative in Albania, Catherine Johnson, participated in the inauguration of the UKT server room and rollout of new software. I'm very pleased to see the wonderful work that is being done here and the fantastic cooperation between USAID and the city of Tirana. One of the things that continues to give us real hope for Albania are the wonderful reforms in process and how people themselves are welcoming these reforms. This kind of support, this kind of reform, is exactly what we need to ensure that the future of Albania is safe, stated Johnson. This project has been realised with the support of USAID and is aimed at improving the collection and storage of data as well as billing of customers. 
And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join me again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of Aura News, thank you and good night.